What's up guys, this is Simi out here from Phantom Knight Trading Company and today we are looking at the weakness deck. So the whole purpose of this deck is to essentially hit for weakness and uh, every every attacker that we have are, is a basic so there's no evolutions that are necessary and every single attack as you can see here does 20 damage. So the whole purpose of the deck is to basically do 40 damage every turn. Now um, in a format where 20 and 30 damage per one energy attack is uh, pretty good, doing 40 damage for one energy is really good. And so that's the, that's the main purpose of the deck. Now the weakness is, um, the weakness of our deck is the fact that we have, like n none of our Pokemon are above 50 HP. They're all 40 HP except for one, which is Erica's Bellsprout and Machop, which has 50. So we get one shot pretty easily because, uh, you know, one or two plus powers can knock us out. Uh, an evolved and energized Pokemon will usually hit us for enough to knock us out. So we lose our Pokemon pretty quickly. So, you know, those 40 damage is really at the count. Now, um, because of that, you know, this deck isn't really... It's not going to be able to hold its own against the most competitive decks because you know at the top of the at the top of the, the pyramid is going to be things like Rocket Zapdos that have no weakness at all you know and there's plenty of other Pokemon that have no weakness. That's the other thing about this deck is if you're facing something that has no weakness, you really your primary strategy falls apart uh, and you're you're hitting 20 every turn, which is okay, but it's you know usually you would want a finishing attack that you're powering up while you're hitting for 20. Here we don't have any of that. We're just basically going all in with the weakness. So let's get into the deck to see how it goes. The The good thing about this deck, though, is that uh, outside of the trainers, you know, some of the trainers are going to be expensive, but they're all staples, so you might as well get them anyway. But at the actual Pokemon themselves, they're super, you know, they're dirt cheap. The most expensive card in this thing is going to be the Rainbow Energies, which go for about like 700 bits per energy for the foil version. You can get them for cheaper with some of the other versions, but um, that's the most expensive card. Um, and so uh, hopefully, you know, you can build this deck faster than in most other decks if you wanted to try out Gen 1. But yeah, so starting off, we got Machop, uh, low kick for 20, fighting, uh, one retreat cost and a weakness of Psychic. Star use our water type, 40 HP, again does 20, weakness to electric, one retreat cost. Bellsprout, 1 retreat cost, 50, and then 20. The thing about Bellsprout is that we have, uh, we're have we going to do 10 damage to ourselves. So if you attach a rainbow, it becomes 40. Do a careless tackle, becomes 30. So there, like, there's, there's potentially other options for grass. However, because it's a colorless type, we, we actually don't need to run any grass energy. And that really helps save, like, it frees up our deck for other things and so that's why Bell Sprouts here it does 20 for colorless even though it does take 10 damage to itself. Abra, this is one of the stars of the deck because he has free retreat and uh, he has energy the the, the uh, effective energy loop is actually really good. It says return a psychic energy attached to Sabrina's Abra to your hand in order to use this attack. Now all of our attackers only need one energy right so Normally, if you have to return the energy back into your hand, that would be really bad. But in this case, it's actually really good because, you know, with the 40, H with 40 HP, Sabrina Zabra is going to get KO'd pretty easily. And uh, if you're returning energy into your hand, then the energy doesn't go with him, right? So if you had another Abra on the bench, you can just uh, re-energize him and he's able to attack with the same energy that we used last turn. So super useful. The free retreat's really where it shines. Because with free retreat, you're able to. Uh, one second, I got a phone call here. Sorry about that. Um, but I'm back now, and I was saying like with the free retreat for Sabrina Zabra, you know, when your main attacker gets KO'd, you can just send Abra up and uh, have free retreat for anything else. Potentially, what happens is you want the same attacker back on the bench, and you're gonna have to not like 90 garbage run him back. So. You're not the garbage run, you find him, you bench him, and then Abra can retreat into him. So having an Abra on the bench at all times is always a good thing, irregardless of whether or not we're going to ever utilize him for the attack. Now, if we're, if we're facing a deck that's you know purely psychic, Abra is going to get one shot even, even faster because he's going to be the attacker that gets hit also for, for weakness. So 
<clears throat> gonna be have to recycling that in that situation. But in general, every match Arbor is gonna be useful as a way of allowing us to to put the primary attacker back up in the active. Moving on though, we do have a Charmander. Uh, his power is not gonna be useful in this match unless we have a fire attached to another Pokemon, like likely the Bell Sprout. So that's the only other situation where the power would be useful. But you know, his power says. Once during a turn, you may take one of your cards attached to one of your other Pokemon attached to the Charmander. So, I'll, you're able to conserve fire and do that way, but in general, we're just going to find fire or we're going to use the Rainbow to use the Fire Tail attack. One retreat cost. Last Pokemon we have is going to be Voltorb. A Rocket's Volt, the Voltorb from Team Rocket set is the one that you're going to want to play because it has a speed ball, one energy for 20 and then 40 HP. Weakness to fighting, retreat cost of one. So, that's all the Pokemon. In terms of our energy counts, we're going to have two fighting, two lightning, two psychic, one fire, and one water. So that encompasses every attacker we have except for Bellsprout. And then we're going to have four rainbow energy just to kind of round out our, our energy. Um, the rainbow is going to be useful even though it does give us each 10 damage, unfortunately. There's no way around that, but rainbow will, will allow us to, to utilize attacks when we don't have the energy in hand. The other way we're going to be look, using energy is going to be, um, where is the card? Energy search. So we have three energy search in the deck, allowing us to find any energy type that we want at any given moment, so long as we have one either in our hand or in our uh, discard pile, and we have item finders to get them back. So super useful card in this kind of deck, allow, allows us to actually even sustain our strategy, because if you can't find the energy that you need, then the whole, you know, the whole point of the, the deck falls apart. So going back to the uh, beginning here, Three computer search and three item finder. We need space for all the energy and all the Pokemon. So definitely uh, we can't do max counts. Ideally, you know, in a perfect goal, I would love to have four, four, but three, three is fine. Two trader. You know, I started this deck with three traders, but two traders ends up being, in terms of the limitations, it's all we can really afford. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, as long as you have one of the discard, you can use the item finder for it. And uh, if you have it in your hand, you can always nightly garbage run a Pokemon and then trade one from your hand for the same Pokemon you just nightly garbage run. So that's a really good important, that's an important combo to, to know about. Two plus power, the reason why these are here, over Defender, because you know, you would think because of our low HP, we're going to be wanting Defender in here. But plus power makes more sense because uh, there's a lot of Pokemon out there that have 50 HP. And uh, even if you hit something for weakness, you're maxing out at 48, 40 damage. Plus power allows us to get to 50. So we basically one shot practically every basic that evolves. And um, we do serious damage to anything that is the gold standard of 70 or higher. So the plus powers are just really useful to hit the 50 damage mark. Because a lot of Pokemon have 50 HP. 4 Oak, definitely useful to keep um, everything going here. Um, sometimes, you know, you're going to draw Oaks too early. And you, you're going to lose one or two in the process. There was one match where I drew like three oak in, in the opening hand and had to and had nothing else to do. So I had to discard everything. That was for, that was a rough match. I did not win that one. But um, <clears throat> having, a, having a max count is really useful to get our uh, Pokemon back. Because, you know, we run a he heavy count of uh, nightly garbage run at three. And so what often happens is, you know, your primary attacker gets KO'd, you, not, you nightly garbage run, then you're going to want to discard your hand into the next one so that you can potentially draw into what you got if you didn't have any trade or energy search in your hand to begin with. So Oak helps us do that. Four count is definitely useful. In terms of, uh, we're going to play two bill. It's like we're lagging a little bit here. So two bill. Um, most decks will run three or four, but space was really restricted. We needed a lot of other techs in, in the in the deck, so two build is all we can really afford. Uh, three gust of wind. We're lagging again. Wow. Um, three gust of wind. This is useful because oftentimes what happens is the opponent will simply force like his active to the bench while he's getting it powered up, or he might have a bench Pokemon that's continuing to get powered up. Gust of wind lets us Lysander it and uh, hit him for weakness so that we can do some severe damage onto something that he's powering up that he's taken several turns to, to power up so definitely good force switch because um we have a bunch of one energy retreaters but oftentimes we don't have more than one energy on the field because we get KO'd so easily 
So having four switch also protects us from special conditions. You know, if, if we're hit, if we are stuck in a special condition that gives him two turns to attack us, he's guaranteed to get KOs at that point. So we can potentially save at a Pokemon using a switch and continue the attack. We, we It's really useful to do so. Three energy shirts we already mentioned, useful to get to any energy you want. Two normal gym because um, we run one to two counts of certain energies. And so oftentimes what happens is if a deck that you're playing against has one type or two types at most. And so that means only out of all the Pokemon, two might be really useful to hit for weakness. And that means potentially uh, maybe three or four energy. So out of all the energy we run, maybe three or four might be useful and two Pokemon might be useful. So if they start removing our energy, this like the specific energy that we need, we won't be able to attack after that. And so that's why no removal gym is really good because it protects our energy to a certain extent. Um, obviously they can hit through it, but they need to discard stuff. So while they're de while they're dealing with 40 damage every turn, they're trying to remove energy and they have to discard stuff. So it, it causes an enough disruption to make it worth it to play. One good manners if you don't know what this card does. Um, it's just loading, but essentially what it does is if you have no basics in your hand, you are allowed to search your deck for any basic and then put it on the bench. Um, this is useful if you know you want to find the specific attacker for the opponent's deck. Good manners will let you do that. It's like there's a, seems like a significant amount of lag going on. I think it's actually my internet connection now that I'm looking at it. Um, so we're not gonna. You can kind of read it on the side here. I'll leave it up for now, but. Um, we already talked about three nightly garbage run. Really useful to get our energy back and get our Pokemon back. That gets KO'd quickly. Uh, high count is definitely worthwhile, especially with Item Finder to get it back because uh, it'll allow you to sustain damage for several turns enough to make it a, make a big difference. Um, two Sabrina. We have two Sabrina's Gaze. Each player shuffles his or her hand into his or her deck and draws a new number of the same number of cards. Uh, there's been too many times where. I start a hand, I have an oak and and like a gaze and then just a bunch of resources that I don't want to discard, but I, you know, like three item finders or something, something, something silly like that, and it's the beginning of the, of the match. So gaze helps us to potentially save our resources, it gives us potential shuffle draw options if our hand is big but we don't have the exact things that we need to, to start the attacking process. So gaze is useful. We also run two Erica. Erica um, make, allows us to draw three cards. So, we, you know, we have two Bill, but two Erica, so it makes up the difference there. Now, Erica helps the opponent as well. However, um, I've chosen to go with Erica simply because it gives us more draw, and uh, Bill is not sufficient enough, I think, in this kind of deck. There's too many, there's been too many matches where I don't have what I need, and Bill doesn't get it, doesn't give it to me. So, Erica has to help us out to maybe that extra one card is exactly what we needed anyway. So, useful for consistency but um and there's that glitch again where i can't see the last card but now i can okay so there's nightly garbage run uh, we already talked about that so yeah that's the whole deck in terms of general matchups you know anything that has weakness and is like a mono, it's like a mono type deck or maybe a, du a dual type deck a lot you have a good shot against it um because you're doing 40 damage every turn now if you there's a lot of like messed up hands, you know, sometimes like you just don't draw what you need. There's a lot of moving pieces in this deck, and so any deck that has a lot of moving pieces is going to have an inherent amount of inconsistency. But um, it's, fun to, it's fun to play. It's cheap to make. The Pokemon are usually the most expensive part of any deck, but these Pokemon are super cheap. So the overall, the overall price of the deck is cheap. Like, again, everything in here outside of, like, the uh, computer search, no removal gym, item finder and like like trader those things are somewhat expensive but in general everything is pretty cheap it's about the one of the cheapest decks you can build to be honest so you know go ahead and try it out i'm going to show you a couple of matches with it and uh, see if you like it and uh let's get into it all right all right looks like we had a game here with uh shining espion we're gonna promote uh abra first since he's got free retreat voltor we're not gonna we might as well bench him because he could potentially do 40 to us it's like he's going to be using Lickitung, weak to fighting. Um, Lickitung is usually a stall option since his attack, since HP is so high, it doesn't get one shot. His first attack uh, paralyzes you. Let's take a look at him closer here. First attack, 
paralyze the second attack confuses and confusion is really bad for this deck um because the confusion you have to retreat and you have to pay energy to do it looks like he got tails though so that's really good and we're back sorry uh, about that we had here. to review yeah, everything to make sure that we and turn off this uh volume on the stream we'll play some good manners here because i want to get the machop out and uh, let's see what he does. He has to acknowledge that I'm playing good manners. Alright, so we have Machop. We have two fighting. Our fire energy is prized, so that's good to know. One, two, three, rainbow. Um, I think I had one in hand. No, I, I don't think I had. So one fire, one rainbow is prized. We have one Machop. I think we should have two Machops, so maybe... The other one's prized here. No, no, it's over here. Sorry. There's one right there. So they're both there. All right. We're just going to get Machop out. And we'll bench him. We will... Erica, I think, is the right call. Or should I just go for the fighting? You know, let me just go ahead and uh, go for the fighting. Just do it that way. That way I don't give him a bunch of cards. So we're going to retreat to Machop. We're going to energize him, and then we're going to hit him for 40. So, really good. Next turn, we can potentially Erica, and it doesn't matter what he gets. But uh, doing 40 damage for one energy is definitely powerful, and uh, we're in a good position, for sure. So, he's got this Mysterious Fossil, though. He plays Energy Removal, which uh, is bad, obviously. And he paralyzed us, but we're going to switch into the Abra. We will Erica now. To get three cards, there's no removal gem, so we wish we had that last turn, but it is what it is. We'll play that, and we're just going to computer search for the oak. Okay. Um, so unfortunately, we did not get a fighting energy or a um, nightly garbage run, so we're going to try Erica again. It, and then we get energy search now, So, but his hand is already packed full with 11. Uh, we can actually take the KO though, so I'm perfectly comfortable with that. We can energy search for a fighting. And attach it to Machop. We will plus power Machop. Now the question is, do I Sabrina's gaze? And I think... Not sure. We'll bench the other Abra though, because get another free retriever in case the first one dies. We might have actually been better off holding it for the traitor, but it, it's fine. Whatever. We're, we won't play the gaze at the moment. We'll low kick, take the KO, and now he's got just one mysterious fossil, but he's got 12 cards in hand, so he's got to have something, obviously. We got no removal gym in play, so he can't destroy our energies all that much. We do need a Garp. Like, if he continues to bench fighting weak Pokemon. We're going to need the other, other energy back, so potentially I might want to find a garbage run, and Gaze might help me do that. Plays another Lickitung. Uh, he's going to have to discard the Fossil to get it in the active. And we have another switch in hand, though, so that's really good. He has enough cards in hand to use an energy removal, so that's bad. But um, maybe I might actually want to computer search... For the garbage run, get all my energy back, and then I might want to oak. That might be the plan, instead of playing the gaze. Let's see what he does, though. For sure, he might... I think for sure he's going to get rid of the energy, because otherwise, you know, why, would he, why wouldn't he get the, rid of the energy? But, yeah. Let's see what he does. If he doesn't promote the Lickitung, I'm definitely going to Gust of Wind him. So that's really good. He plays Recycle for heads. He gets for his, another Lickitung back. So yeah, I think he's just trying to stall me or something. Um, but he decides not to to promote it, so I'm definitely going to gust of wind him to start taking more damage on him. Uh, low kick is fine. Next turn, I could potentially computer search for a plus power and finish him off. He decides to play Poke Center instead. Plays the DCE and he paralyzes me. I have plus power now, so I'm definitely going to switch into Sabrina. Or Sabrina's Abra, and then of course retreat again. And uh, I'm, I'm gonna hold the plus power for now. I think that's the right play because I can't take the KO anyway, so it doesn't matter. Let's go ahead and 40. We'll see what he does. 
plays the other Lickitung. Um, if he has another, he needs, he's, he needs, he needs a switch to retreat, so not too worried about that. And yeah, okay, so it looks like he just left in the active, which is fine with me. I can plus power him to start taking that out. So got another KO, that's really good. Item finder, potentially I can get the gust of wind to start taking more damage, and that's exactly what I'm going to be doing. Trader, I'm going to keep in hand because I want to get the other Machop in play. I might actually not discard Charmander because of that, which means that it is time to get rid of Gaze and this Lightning Energy. We'll do that to get the Gust of Wind and go ahead and get the another Lickitung in the active. We can low kick him here and uh, see what he does. Potions. So that's bad. If he paralyzes me, that would be bad. He plus powers and he KOs. Okay. So definitely was a good call here. What I'm going to do is trade the Charmander for the other Machop. I really need a good night. I really need a garbage run at this point. Hopefully Bill can can get me one. It does. Nice. So I can go ahead and play this to get both of these back and the Machop. Okay. I have saved that much, so now I can retreat into Machop. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just play the the Rainbow Energy. Why not? Then we can low kick him, so he's now 30 HP away from death. Plays the computer search. He's probably going to get the Poke Center or something. This is the likely plan there, but we do have another Machop into Fighting Energy in the deck now, so we can potentially follow up here to continue the pressure of the 40 damage. Uh, he gets rid of, I believe he got rid of the um, energy removal, he paralyzes us. Now unfortunately that's really bad because we've lost one, two, three item finders, I think that's all of them, and two switches, so that's incredibly bad. Um, in that case we're just going to bench this guy. We will now, I might want to actually not have the extra damage on him. Let me just go ahead and take a look at my deck. That might be the best play here. Do I have any other possibilities here? Do I have a scoop up or something? I have a switch. Okay, good. So we're going to switch. We're going to switch into the Abra. Going to Oak. And we will retreat into the Machop. We don't have a plus power. We're all out of all that, so we're just going to low kick. And hopefully next turn, um, we he doesn't paralyze us. But he does, so um, we're just going to... I think we're just not going to play anything at the moment. I don't want to recover anything that's in the discard. I want to wait until the Machop gets KO'd. So we're just going to end our turn. And one paralyzed. Let's see if he has a plus power to take a KO here. He doesn't, but he does paralyze us again. He's getting really good t uh, heads flips there. So we're just going to end our turn. Um, no need to play anything else. Unfortunately, with our, our plus powers and no item finders, we do not have a way of taking a one shot here. So that's going to be bad. We will attach the energy, and we're just going to low kick and see what he does here. Is he going to try to confuse us? If he does, that could be really bad because then we can't retreat unless we flip the coin. Um, definitely would not be good. He plays scoop up, so that's... <laughs> uh, yeah, so that just happened. Okay. Um, in that case, I'm just going to low kick. Now he's going to try to go for a deck out situation. Um, obviously not good for us, but... Um, we do have another garbage run in hand, so that's something to think about. We can uh, gust of wind him to go ahead and start putting pressure on again. He starts, he's hopefully, okay, finally we have a chance here now. We can low kick again. And now he's within KO range. Now he has a chance, if he attacks us, okay, he decides to play poke center instead. So he's this whole deck is just designed for stall, which is fine. We're doing three shots, so uh, we're putting a, hot, a huge amount of pressure on a 90 HP Pokemon. So that's definitely nothing to scoff at. So now he's going to have to either uh, scoop up again, lose more energy again, 
whatever his plan is. Um, it's fine. We do have one. We have nightly garbage run in hand, so the point of that being, we uh, have ten turns left essentially. Ten turns. So, let's see what he does. He decides to restore a bunch of energy, and now we have two nightly garbage runs, so that's fine too. Um, and then what we do, we're gonna do is we're gonna gaze after that. So we're gonna end our turn. And hopefully we can take a take at least one attack on him at this point. And we can, so that's really good. So we're going to low kick him. Now he's going to take the KO, and we're going to be able to return everything back. Um, that that should be both of our matchups, so we can have a maximum nightly garbage run here. Uh, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, great. So we're gonna nightly garbage run, get a matchup energy, and then matchup back. Okay, luckily we have Trader, so we're going to Trader our Bellsprout for the Machop, and we're going to click OK. We're going to Bench Machop, we're going to Retreat, Fighting Energy, continue the pressure. Now again he has to find a way to heal himself, otherwise he loses a Lickitung. Seven cards left though, so that's gonna be bad. He paralyzes us, um, definitely, obviously bad. We're just gonna have to take it because we have no switches left, no item finders. So we're just gonna have to end our turn. Hopefully, he doesn't keep doing that. Uh, and he does, and we're just gonna have to do it again. We're gonna keep pausing it. Uh, he plays a defender now, and. We're just going to bench this match up all right now. We're going to low kick for 20. And he paralyzes us again, of course. Unbelievable. So we're going to just let him die, I guess. And turn. He's gotten so lucky with all these. And now he plays a Chansey. Of course he would. Okay. I think we've lost this. Because it looks like we're just not going to be able to keep up with the damage output here. I kind of want to just uh, use the rainbow, but the damage means a turn. But but if I play energy search, then that, t that takes out a card from my deck, so I lose a turn that way too. So actually, I think this is the right play. So we're just going to low kick here for 40. Plays another defender, and uh, let's see, let's see what he does. So unfortunately, this is a huge weakness of of my deck. You know, our max out, our max damage output is potentially 50. You know, with the plus power, but beyond that, like we're not in a good shape at all. So we're just gonna low kick again, and um, hopefully he doesn't retreat here, because then otherwise we can we can actually beat him. Okay, good, he doesn't, so now we can actually take another KO. We're completely decked out, but we have Garbage Run here. So we're just going to do this, and then this, and um, I guess just another Energy. It would be awesome to get the Rainbow back, but what can you do? Play Garbage Run, and uh, we're just going to Low Kick. Now, I, I'm not sure how we're going to beat this Chansey, though. <laughs> Um, it's just far too powerful for us to deal with. He has an Electabuzz though, so we can uh, potentially hit his Electabuzz. Um, do we have enough? I don't think we do. We're just going to be taking as much chaos as we can at this point. So we'll go ahead and uh, Gust of Wind his Electabuzz, and we're just going to low kick him. And uh, hopefully their next turn we can draw the Machop, but I think we've lost obviously because there's no way we can take three prizes at this point. So unfortunately his deck out strategy works, but you know look at how close we got, especially with the weak the like the um the situation we were placed in, you know, where his whole deck is a stalled deck and we still were able to take three, potentially four prizes at this point. So yeah. We'll promote the Abra, and we draw the Machop, so we'll bench him, we will energize him, and then retreat into Machop, and uh, take the low kick here, but now I think 
the match is over, obviously. So, yeah. He double-edged, and he took the last prize in the process. So, good game. Good game. I could not beat your stall deck, but we came close. So, uh, we're going we're gonna go on into the next match here. Okay, we got a match here with Al Quilo de Man. We'll start with Charmander. Let's see what we got. Surge is Electabuzz with Charge and Electric Current. He plays a. Okay, so this is gonna be. He's just gonna RSA and just destroy my hand, yeah. So he's playing the maximum troll deck, basically. <laughs> so it's pretty ridiculous. Uh, we don't run any disruption either, so it's not like we can stop him or even respond to him. So probably gonna lose this one at this point. Take up to two energy from your discard pile, attach them, take one energy card, attach, attach it to one of your bench. If you have no bench, make one discard the energy card. So all he's doing is maximum of 20. So he's got fighting resistance and fighting weakness. And so we'll bench him so that we don't deck out. We might as well play him here and then just start doing damage. Um, we brought him down to 40 HP, so if we can get a Machop, we can take KO on him. Unfortunately, his Zapdos is probably going to be the biggest problem for this deck, because, uh... Because... The Zapdos is going to hurt, so he's going to play Dark Raichu. Now I'll do 20 on us. There's the oak. Uh, we'll switch. And I don't want to energy surge, do I? There's really no point. We're just going to oak. Play no removal, Jim. We can gust of wind his dark Raichu that he's trying to power up. We lose a fighting here, unfortunately, but it is what it is. And we're just going to oak again. Now we can... Hmm. So we can traitor and lightning for the... Machop well, looks like one of our Machops is prized. Play him here. We will retreat into Machop. So he would need two rocket sneak attack here. One to get rid of computer search, one to get rid of item finder. So we're in a good position. It's gonna low kick now, get get him for 40. See what he see what he does, see how he responds. He might change to Zapdos, unfortunately. That's the real problem with this deck. Like, everything else we could have handled with Machop. But now, with Zapdos here, that's really where things start to fall apart in a way. Okay, we're doing the bill now. Um, what I could do, potentially, is... Well, there's really no point in recovering anything as of yet. I need him to go down first before that happens. So he's realized that Zapdos is going to be the main way that he's going to be able to really hurt me and so against Zapdos all we can really do is just start taking 20 and 20 at a time really so we're just going to do that yeah we're just gonna do 20 at a time it's all we can do there's the bolt orb we're just going to continue Um, I wonder if he has any heal options. His hand is dead. Whoa, I didn't realize. It was his hand was completely dead. Wow. Okay. Well, now that's <laughs> okay. Um, Forty. Okay, so now we're in a great, great shape. We can take a KO on him if. Uh, oh yeah, we're 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 definitely rolling here. 
these got 70 now, so we can, I don't want to use the thing, so let's go ahead and just use energy search for psychic here. We'll attach that to Abra, and we're just going to energy loop. Wow. <laughs> so his whole disruption strategy. Okay, we can now retreat to Machop and uh, low kick we'll do 40 we need two plus powers don't think we have them here they're still in our deck somewhere but for so he might also unfortunately we need the other abra is what we need just so that we can have a free retreater we don't have a traitor in our hand i might just have to bench the volt over just so that if he finds a way to ko my benches then you know Looks like we're, uh oh, come on, okay, there we go, 40, he's going to energy bomb to KO us, okay, we'll bring up the Abra, now we can nightly garbage run for this, this, and this, okay, we're, just, we're actually going to just take a KO on the right here, I think. Right, because um, this okay, so that would be a huge like. What we need is, at the very least, we need to get rid of this, and the switch maybe. I don't want to give him a new hand for the Machop, so we'll bench him. Hmm. Could take a KO by just gusta winning him. I might actually do that. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Get rid of these two. For the gust of wind. Gust of wind his dark Raichu. Retreat into Machop. We'll attach the energy. And low kick. Okay, beautiful. That Zapdos really would have been a problem. I mean, he if he gets out of his dead hand, I think we're in trouble. But as of right now, I think we're in you know we're in an okay position. Not not great, but okay. Plays the he plays the boss's way. Probably gonna try to get another Dark Raichu out. Okay. Um, I could try to item. I could be aggressive, but I'm not going to. Just gonna take the KO, take another prize. We're two, we're up two prizes, so that's really good. Okay, we're still alive, and we can take a KO. Now we can gust of win him, and that's what exactly what we'll do. That's the weakness of Dark Electro is gust of win is such a huge problem for him. Okay. He's gotten rid of that, and we can highly garbage run again for the Machop. This time we'll get energy back and a Charmander, I guess. Mm. Yeah, why not? Okay. Now uh, we can just take a KO on him. And it should be fine. We can... I think we're just going to Oak, actually. Yeah, we're going to Bill. Now we have a Lightning, so yeah. We'll bench the Abra, and then we'll Energy root Loop. Take the We have one prize left. He has a Dark Electrode left. Uh-oh, the Zapdos. I have an Item Finder, though. So if, as long as... I think... Um, if he can't get rid of the Dark Electrode off the field with a scoop up, he loses. So he's asking himself, can he KO my Abra? I don't think he can unless he has an Imposter Oak. But he actually played Oak, uh oh, so that means all of his disruption resources are back in his hand now. He could Item Finder for an Imposter Oak and really cause problems that way. He could do a lot of things at this point. We, uh,. Freed up the other Machop from our prizes, so now we have two outs for Machop in the future. But, I mean, if he's going to start powering up the Zapdos, it won't matter. Um, this is pretty intense here. Um, 
he's trying to figure out how to handle his hand right now because he just got a fresh one. Um, Imposter Oak and then Sneak Attack really would cripple us at this point. We have enough to survive a couple of turns, but he only needs three turns potentially once he gets powered up. He decides to retreat. Does he Imposter Oak us? If he doesn't, then we win. He def defenders the Zapdos. Okay, we've won. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to bench this. We're going to energy search. We're going to we're going to go all in here for the weakness attack. That's how we want to finish this. That's how we roll. We will retreat. We will item finder for this and this. We actually don't even need it, but we might as well. I forgot. I didn't see it in my hand. Gust of wind. GG, bro. GG. And we can low kick. And we've won. So we have beaten this lightning deck with our weakness deck. Uh, the Zapdos could have been a huge problem, but we were able to come out of it. We were able to, to take it out with, with enough turns. We got lucky that he promoted it as his hand got dead. We almost potentially would have lost this match if it had not been for that top deck oak. And that's kind of how it goes if... With his imposter oak, with this sneak attack, and I'm su I'm surprised he had he didn't play rocket's trap. Looks like he might have just played a couple of these, so it looks like he doesn't even play the rocket's trap. But yeah, uh, that that's weakness. That's the weakness deck. You can see how if in the right scenario, right situation, you can win because you're doing 40 damage every turn, and it really puts a lot of pressure on the opponent. But yeah, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed, and we'll see you next time.